superstar. He is an absolute superstar, Tom Mitchell. Chris at the back. Chris is too good. Neil, 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 yes! Oh, how good was that? I've got the honours of doing the first ever Dacos pod, uh, Nick Dacos and Josh Dacos. Welcome to the Ball Magnets pod. This has been in the works for a while. Um, we've spent a bit of time in Perth the last couple of days. We've been talking about a few topics, so hopefully there's a, a few good things we can talk about today. But I wouldn't mind starting with the Table Tennis Championships last night because uh, <laughs> Team Mitchell finished on top, coming from the third seed and uh, finished on top. So uh, how was your take on that, Josh? You were the undisputed champ. Um, <laughs> Just wasn't very boring. Wasn't entertaining, but uh, yeah, we battled out for tier two. Clear winner here. I think I was your toughest competition. I'd give myself. Who did finish on the second seed? Uh, myself, Nick. I was Nick a bit third. Sore from the game. Yeah. I too much, but. Well, let's talk about how close you two are because it's obviously I see it every single day at the footy club, and you two are always in there doing different things. But I guess this started from a young age for you two, like kicking the balls around I assume with the old man is where it started but then it's it's still going on today when you're in your 20s yeah no we've always been super close we've um we've loved sort of training together and um you've been a great addition to the team now too with little um three-way training sessions we do but um yeah Josh and I've always helped each other along the path I think we both love doing it um early days for him it was probably trying to hold a spot in the team um, in his first couple of years. And for me, it was just trying to um, make state and representative teams in under 16s, 17s and 18s. So um, we push each other a lot, but um, we have a lot of fun in doing it too. It is like, it is interesting because the four year gap between Nick and I, it's nearly five. But like growing up, Nick would always hang around all my mates. Um, even like when dad was coaching football teams, Nick would be that little mascot and always get along with the older boys. So he's always been mature from a really young age. Um, obviously, he's still really cheeky, but he, um, yeah, he's always just, we've always been super close. He's hung around my mates and everything I did with my mates, Nick did as well. So it's probably helped how close we've become. Yeah. And obviously knowing you boys pretty well, you know, I've heard some of the stories across the journey, but obviously the audience hasn't. And we, we've sort of, over dinner last night, we we're just chatting about probably your journey more, Josh, and how there was one time in your career where you honestly thought about throwing it away and quitting and then to see where you are now. There was that particular game you spoke about in the VFL. Do you mind touching on that and, yeah, and sort yeah. of how you and Nick worked together to get through it? I had a few. Like there was obviously um, everyone throughout their journey has doubts, but in my third year, I was struggling to get into the team. We obviously had a really good team backing up from 2018 grand final and I just found it really hard. I put in so much work with Nick and it would be quite tiring. We loved it. Obviously, similar to you, we love football so much, but... After days where I wouldn't get a kick, Nick and I would be straight to the park the next day practicing for hours. And um, back then I just did it because it probably, I thought it was, it was really good. It took my mind away from football, but I probably didn't realize I need other things in my life to keep me balanced. So I had a really bad day in the VFL and I remember Nick played as a year 10 or year nine for Kerry and killed it. So it kind of was really tough for me because I was so happy for Nick, but at the same time I felt like I was letting the family down, myself down. And I remember that night, would talk about it, Nick and I, and it was always just trying to find ways to get better. And I remember that night, I was up till like three or four a.m. watching highlights of Robbie Gray. <laughs> I still remember they played Carlton in his room, um, wasn't it? In Nick's yeah, room. in Nick's yeah. room, and they were playing um, Carlton at Adelaide Oval. I remember watching it till three a.m. All the camera angles, um, and it was just like an obsession just to try and make it. And it was either that I go all in, or I probably I wasn't enjoying my football at the time, so I was kind of yeah, I was at the crossroads. Yeah. And you rode those bumps with him, obviously, Nick, because you went to every single one of Josh's games before getting to Collingwood. Yeah. And you were obviously in at the club prior to getting drafted as well. Like, you'd come in and train with him. So, I know, like, selection was always tough for you because you always wanted to see your brother playing. And, yeah, 100%. Um, I remember vividly, it'd always be a Thursday afternoon. He'd get told if he was playing or not, and I'd be at school. Um, like, often during class, I didn't have my phone on me, so then I'd have the anxious weight of between classes like checking my phone to see if he was playing or not um so i rode a lot of the highs and lows with him it was always so exciting when he got picked and was going to play um and obviously he was in such a good team at the time too so um really exciting to watch him and then yeah obviously unfortunate when he didn't get picked but we'd um we'd go train or do something to take our mind off it or feel like we're at least progressing towards getting picked again so um there's been a lot of highs and lows but it's so good now to see him playing good footy and being consistent in the team and like just on that we used to nick and i when i probably got to the age yeah i might have been probably started when i was 19 18 19 nick must have been 14 15 we used to have this saying 
and it was driver standards, but we used to shorten it to DTS. And it was like this weird <laughs> saying that Nick and I would say That's every time. That's club would say. Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was honestly, and it was basically just driving each other. Like, it'd be like crazy stuff, like whether, um, you know, Nick, let's go to the park. He'd be like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm like, come on, let's DTS. Let's drive the standards. And even like if I wanted, you know, to eat shitty food or whatever, Nick would say. And it was just always kind of something that, um, a saying we had, and it really did help us for years. And like, we would... Um, yeah, use that to drive ourselves and um, while still having fun, but, you know, just keep pushing ourselves to, you know, get to where we want to get to. It's funny now too, like being in the Collingwood environment with Fly, like he obviously preaches that so much with get better every day. And that's obviously one of our big sayings. So it's like, yeah, it's um, held us in good stead for where we are now, I guess. That's pretty awesome. My favorite story from last night was when you, Josh, mentioned you missed a goal late in the game in the VFL. And then you both went to the park after the game and went for a few hours which is that's something you see in the nba where like you know Giannis misses a few free throws <laughs> or they go back out of the court and you've done that after a footy game and then you kicked a game winner for carry yeah um after the siren i remember it, it was pitch black um by the time we got to the ground you played i think carlton vfl and josh missed like sort of clutch time goal to win in the game i think it was in the last three minutes or so it was a set shot um and I said, all right, well, let's go to the park. So we went to the park, the local park, and it was very dark, but we worked out a little routine that we're going to do in clutch time scenarios to give us a little bit of confidence. And then, yeah, a week later, I got a free kick and kicked the goal after the siren to beat Brighton um, in school footy. So, um, yeah, it was quite surreal and sort of like a great coincidence that it happened. But, um, yeah, I do remember that vividly, yeah. It's... Um like, in my opinion, the two best kicks in the AFL, I'm probably biased because I play with you two. Very biased. <laughs> Good mates, but, um, <laughs> it has to be the reason why you're both so skillful. Like, just the accumulation of hours over the years. And obviously, I've probably joined the club this year and tried to, like, we, we do a lot of extra skill sessions outside of uh, the club. And, you know, we're quite similar in that regard. But is that where you think you've got the leg up with your skills? Like, it has to be there's just the amount of work you guys put in. Yeah, for sure. I think growing up, um, it helped so much with dad. He never, ever forced a football into our hands. Everything was just fun and really organic. So we, um, we always loved getting the football in our hands playing and we would, you know, paint the walls in the house with our footies and would have a collection of footballs that mum and dad, mum would hide from us because the noise and just the disturbance would create in the house. And, um, yeah, we'd always be upstairs kicking through doors or playing against each other. And I remember just belting mum and dad, <laughs> I could always hear mum yelling and dad would always be like, no, no, Cole, relax. Like, let them play. That's our future beach house. Like, let them play. Let the boys do their thing. So it was always a credit to them. They always let us have fun. Dad was at the park with us every night after a full day of work. And, um, you know, Nick and I do pride ourselves on our kicking and, um, the skills because we love the game so much. Um, and obviously you're very biased putting us up there this so many great kicks but um it's something that we've always practiced and, and loved doing dad had to do you remember dad had to in the end he had to like make these little paper balls i think it was like toilet paper or newspaper it was newspaper and he'd like scrunch up all this newspaper together wrap all tape around it and we'd kick that around as a footy so we didn't mark the walls in the <laughs> was, end yeah. just, the lengths we went to and it was That's um cool. it was just always so much fun and um i saw nick from a young age just always with a footy in his hands and the confidence he had with the football in his hands from such a young age it's always been amazing. I think it's down to that, what he did every single day without thinking with the football. It's pretty insane. Love hearing those stories. What about, I saw a photo during the week of you in a Carlton jersey I knew this like, was coming. when you were a kid. Can you just talk us through how that, obviously your old man's a Collingwood legend um, and you've probably been asked about it, but I've actually never asked you. Yeah, no. Um, from a young age, I think it was around under 10s, would have been, it would have been six or seven. I was playing local footy with Tommy Silvani and um, on a Sunday afternoon, Carlton were obviously playing on um, late Sunday games and his dad, Sauce Steve, would take me to games and got me to run out with Carlton, got me a jersey, um, did everything to try and persuade me and dad wasn't too happy at the time. But I also love Mark Murphy, so he was a big decision, a uh, big part in my decision to cross over to the Navy Blue. But um, it only lasted a, a couple years years and then I think it came around to 2010 I jumped back on the Collingwood bandwagon as they're about to win a premiership so yeah. it was short lived it was short lived yeah. they were bad days but back no, on the it's, pies not it's long good after. to be in the black and white it was yeah. funny like within the house like when it started it was all just a bit of fun and games and then once he got the jumper it became serious and we're actually going to Carlton games for Nick and he'd have his Carlton flag and there was a bit there we would actually, dad was actually treating him like a COVID patient he'd uh, <laughs> have be doing temp checks would be checking in on him and um but yeah, like once again, I think that's just down to dad. Like he, 
was so happy for Nick to go to Carlton, taking him to Carlton games and just so seeing him happy home, enjoying yeah. the game is yeah. what was most important. No, that's good. I, um, I was just thinking as we were driving in here as well, the first time I met you boys, uh, obviously we're spending a bit of time. Uh, we've got a bit of time off in Perth and having a bit of downtime at the moment, all, all three of us. And obviously Geordie's head back. Would have been good to have him here too. But I remember we met at the races one day. We met at the races one day. But I was remembering the message that I sent you. <laughs> so when, when I got traded to Collingwood, you sent me a message saying, Tommy, uh, welcome to the club. And obviously when you get traded, your phone's going bananas. Yeah. Kind of like when you get drafted, your phone's going bonkers and I was overseas in America at the time and my phone's blowing up like congratulations all these things anyway this is my version of the story you can tell you yours after <laughs> I get a message and I've read it as Nick da uh, I've read it as Nick Davos so Nick Davos is a, a friend of mine and he's um, in finance and helps me with some things outside of footy and I can't remember the exact wording of the text but it said something um, about congratulations and etc and I've replied saying mate thanks so much for everything you helped me with off field like you know you've You've been awesome for me. Like, wouldn't be in this position without you, etc. Anyway, later date, I find out that I've actually sent it to Nick Dacos <laughs> because a couple of days later, I get a reply being from you were in your first year of AFL, yeah, or yeah. If you just finished, saying, "Hey, mate, didn't realise I'd done this much for you, yeah. uh, seeing, seeing as we haven't met yet." But yeah, looking forward to getting started at training. Do you I was remember very that? confused. Yeah, I think there might have been some beers impairing your vision there with the, <laughs> the Nick Davos and Nick Dacos. But I do remember it. I was on a plane back um, from Gold Coast. I went with my girlfriend. Um, at the end of the season for a week away and sort of the text from you came through um, as I'd landed and I was very confused. I was like, I don't know what I've done for this boat. That's, <laughs> like, does he think I've got him traded here? Or <laughs> but um, yeah, that was very funny. And then we clarified it later, but um, that, that was a good Your time. response was very polite. I better get it up after because I don't know the exact wording, but it's, it's a pretty good laugh. It was very Did he tell funny. you about that? He did. It He's was probably thinking, what's wrong with Tom Mitchell? It I'm was like, funny. Is he, is he all there? Has <laughs> <laughs> he got me mixed up yeah. with someone? But yeah. yeah. Um, what about, um, so one of your best attributes on field is your running ability. And I call it the teleport button. Yeah. But there's been times <laughs> in games, and Josh, you say it all the time as well, when you're at a, you're in a transition play on the wing and you know we're linking up with handball and um, play the way we like to play. And Nick will be next to you. And then in the flash of, it feels like five seconds, he's like 150 meters away. And I call it the teleport button. <laughs> but like, how do you do it? Like, obviously you're super fit, but... You, you know when to go with speed as well. That's the strength of your game, clearly. Yeah, I think I'm trying to get the balance still between knowing when to go and when to pull up. Scott always says to me that I've got to pull the handbrake a bit more. Sometimes I'll be in the forward pocket as a half back, But um, no, yeah, I think that's one of my strengths. I try and stay involved in the passage and, and run forward and um, chain up and do some damage going forward. But yeah, we have a good laugh about the teleport button. I don't it's think... It's so funny. <laughs> it happened on the weekend. <laughs> it happened on the weekend. It was... Uh, which goal was it you kicked? I reckon the second. The second one? Yeah. Yeah. Before you know, I think you summed it up perfectly. It's the teleport button. He, yeah. um, he know his timing, knowing when to go is yeah. Um, yeah, pretty good. And the speed is next level. There was a, the first goal you kicked was quite funny. Actually, you handballed it to me, and like I probably could have just run into the side fifty and tried to hit a target. And I, I reckon if you watch the footage, I wait for like two seconds. I'm like, Nick's going to come through. Again. <laughs> Here's a one meter handball. And then you went, did your things, zigzagged through, and kicked another goal. No, it was very good. I owe you one for that. That was nice. That's yeah, all good. All good. Um, and what about off field boys? Because I know huge on your gaming especially you like when you're Very not kicking big. footies and doing your extras it's call of duty yourself bill frampton josh is on there how many hours are we accumulating a week josh has cop he's copped the axe actually billy frampton and i went to match committee and we we had to make a big decision really yeah match committee is a pretty pretty serious thing in the, the cod world and i've uh, i've been given the axe it's uh Keep apparently i've been putting in the hours so the these it's, pre it's actually pretty awkward though because billy and i'll be talking about like all right well, when we're done at the club, we'll get on at three o'clock, and Josh will walk past, and we just scratch the head, act like we're not uh, we're not talking about COD. So the honest we're, conversations are important to have, though. They are important. So you they're, to yet, have that. they're yet to give me the feedback. It's more, you know, they'll peer offline. I'll go online to see, you know, who's on. They're offline. I can't see them on. Um, it's taken a hit for Chuck and I's relationship, Billy Frampton. Um, yeah, so it's uh, I'm gonna have to do some work to get back into. No, the team. we um we do love our COD. 
I'm thinking about maybe starting a stream, um, but I've got to get a little bit better. Billy's just bought one of those new remotes, a bit expensive, but um, no, he's going all out, so I might have to follow him through and, and join him. Is it just COD or is there a few other games? Like, do you get into the FIFA, 2K? Because I feel like oh, I'm not a gamer, but I've only ever played the sporting games. We used to be a bit more FIFA back in the day. We did. And Nick we used to have my credit card set up to the FIFA, and all I'd see <laughs> is just statements. Statements of just... I used to love my FIFA points. I had a bad addiction. But yeah, we do, we do love like playing PlayStation. It gives us a bit of downtime and um, it is good like getting on with Chuka, Nick, Jack Crisp occasionally, a few of the boys, you know, we all have that banter and before you know it, we're on for a few hours and it's it's a good way to like kind of just relax and, and still have that friendly banter. It's, yeah. it's always good the day before a game, I find we do it. We'll um, go into the club early in the morning, we have our meetings and then we go home and Billy and I'll just be on for five, six hours, just absolutely sweating so it out. Jamie Elliott's um, big on his gaming too. Yeah, he he's co- massive he on it. Yeah, 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 he's COD. Um, I think he's like to be, a gun, like it. Yeah, like he, and he used to be in. handy at FIFA, uh, at Fortnite back in the day, but I think he's given that up. So I think it's COD for him at the moment. We might yeah. have to get you on the stick soon, Tommy. No, nah, man, I won't be much help on there. The contested right. ball, just a hard <laughs> point. Can you do any contested ball in <laughs> FIFA? <laughs> <laughs> um, what about in your short career, Nick? You've achieved a lot. Cripper obviously broke the record. Oh, sorry. The Collingwood record for most consecutive games on the weekend, 200 plus. You haven't missed a game since, since you've played for Collingwood all of last year, all this year so far. In my opinion, your best game was probably Anzac Day, mm. which was an unbelievable win for the club. You obviously kicked two goals in the last, had a heap of the ball, won the medal, which you just remember when you had to prepare the for your speech? That was funny, yeah. I had um, Because he's so modest, I won't let him say it, but I, I you know, went up to Nick and I'm like, oh, you got your speech ready? And he's like, oh, no, nah, like, you know, kind of brush it off. And then... Yeah, then the media manager came up to me, like literally instantly after you said that to me and she was like, oh, look, you've won the medal and my head started spinning. I was like, oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. And then I've come up to you and I'm like, what do I say? Like, <laughs> what do I say when I get up there? Do I have to talk or not? And you were pretty good. You're, uh, you've obviously had a lot of experience. You Tommy's are, media trained. Yeah, you <laughs> shored me up pretty quickly. But um, no, that was, that was awesome. I love playing Anzac Day. It's a game I've watched for so many years, so it was cool to... Be out there, get the win, come from behind, five goals down, I think, again, at yeah. three-quarter time. So it was pretty epic. And then, um, yeah, to get the medal was huge on it for oh, me. It was unreal. I think we just gave you a quick quick few points. You did. You were sharp. Yeah. <laughs> but you were, you were, you, initially, you didn't want to, um, you know, prepare for the special. Like, mate, just have a few things. We're ready to go and just get out there and do <laughs> Lucky it, for you, I would have got up there and just panicked, I think. Froze. Just froze. Yeah. yeah. But no. What do you reckon has been your best game, Josh? Because you've had some crackers as well. And obviously, I reckon your game's gone to another level this year all Oz squad last year you should be in the All-Australian team I think at this point uh, with you're the very way biased you're Tommy I love it no, <laughs> <laughs> no the boys are playing good footy um, do you have one game that sticks out for you where you're like that was a good day yeah it's a good question I um, I'd probably just say probably one of my three goal games either last year or this year just because that ability to hit the scoreboard and especially from a wing just to try and get on the end of it. Luckily, I've got like a few bo- few boys like you that look after me. Um, but yeah, like I, like I think since Fly's come across, obviously all the work I've done with Nick and Dad throughout the years, um, you know, it definitely probably, it sometimes feels like it's the work you've done in the off season or pre-season, but really it's like a body of work for mm-hmm. um, years now. So it's, it's, it's nice, it's awesome. Like the team's going so well. We're having so much fun on the weekends. Um, we go into games with such a confidence and um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving playing this year and I just can't wait for, for the back half of the year. Yeah. And, you know, we've touched on your skill level and ability to hit the scoreboard. You've already won a goal of the year, could have been two. But that first one you won, the, the check side from the junction, that was a kick that you've practiced a lot and just funny how it came up in game situation. Yeah, it's a lot of things that Nick and I practice. Like I think you've done a couple of times with us, like a few of the kicking drills we do with um, the pole, just making the goal shorter and, um, yeah, we'd set them up. And I still remember it with um, a local park near us and Nick was just letting me shoot for a while. And I was just getting in a rhythm and I remember just doing that same kick over and over again and couldn't miss. And Nick, it was like for some reason, Nick kind of struggled with that kick, kicks every other kick, but um, he just let me keep going. And I remember it was before the COVID um season shut down and everything so when I got into that situation in the game it was crazy because I didn't even think I just did it and then when I look back on it I'm like that's Nick and I's work that we did that day at the park so it is cool when you see things that you've practiced and then not knowing when they'll come into your game but then they do so um, it was a pretty cool moment I love winning goal of the year I was so nervous going out there <laughs> for my speech and I remember Nick actually came with me to Channel 7 Studios because um, in Melbourne we had the lockdown and everything and I remember 
we were like couldn't believe I won the medal and we're just so happy and pumped so it was definitely a really cool occasion what do you get these days did you get a car or something no not right. a car unfortunately times are tough for the <laughs> AFL <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I true. think uh, yeah the car's been stripped I think you get yeah a little bit of cash yeah um, the medal yeah. yeah that's cool and you almost won a second time that goal was at the MCG I remember was it against Port Essendon. Essendon. I reckon that goal was better. That was than your definitely first better one. than my first. I um I actually thought I'd won it because Sam Draper was not there. He was in. Was this the night? Where Europe. did they present it? Uh, this was last year at the Brown though. Yeah. And then Shay Bolton wasn't there either too. So once I got wind of that, I'm like, oh, maybe maybe I've won it. Like they're not coming their way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I actually didn't hear when they announced it like who had won it for some reason. I just didn't hear. Um, but Draper's goal and like even Shy could have easily won it as well. They were both pretty good girls. Yeah, and on the night you were saying that you actually couldn't hear as well, like you couldn't yeah. hear the, the audio of if you'd won it. Yeah, I was. But you'd assume, but it would have been awkward if you like got up out exactly. of your seat. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at what? Nick and everyone. I'm like, what is, have they said the name? It was. I think there was a bit of a delay or something, but um, yeah, no, I did, yeah, didn't end up getting it. Yeah, yeah, and obviously Brownlow night's going to be a big one. You know, your name's always thrown around with that Nick at the moment. How do you, how are you dealing with the the pressure of it? You've been asked this before by media I guess but a second year player to be doing what you're doing is pretty incredible but I don't know you, it doesn't seem to affect you at all you just get to work very process driven as you know Fly is one of his main mantras as well is is that a pretty simple way of putting it or but how do you deal with it because even you know we're at Brecky before and you're getting asked for photos you know you're like a Hollywood rock star everywhere you go <laughs> at the moment how how do you deal with it no well I think um I'm, I'm very lucky. I, like it sounds cliche, but I do have a really good support network. Um, my family always keep me grounded and driven. Um, at the same time, they'll always give me honest feedback, which I love. And then, um, pretty lucky, I've got a good manager in Robbie Durazio who looks after us and um, talk to him pretty much on the daily and and catch up. And um, as you know, I'm off social media a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I download it, but I genuinely don't see a lot of the talks I'll um I'll play a game on the weekend and then I'll do my own assessment of how I went I don't really read much about what other people think um which I think is good and then I'll have little areas where I want to get better so as you said I think it's being quite process driven um just to get to work again but um I think the greatest thing for me is the team's going so well so that's where all my focus lies at the moment I'm really excited for the back half of the year and to attack finals hopefully um, we're in a position to make it which is so exciting for me so I'll just keep working towards getting those wins and um, hopefully solidifying a, a top four spot and a, a home mm. final at the G it is good fun I don't reckon I've ever had this much fun playing footy it's hard to describe when I get asked about it but you know it does probably help that we're winning but I think the environment is it's nothing that it's not like anything I've been a part of before. Uh, I'm not sure if you two can elaborate and try and explain, but just the way Fly instills confidence in players, he builds everyone up. You know, we still get messages across, but we have so much fun and we work bloody hard. How would you picture it? Yeah, we're we're so lucky, and I'm, I always, especially the last couple of years since Fly's come, um, so grateful for the environment we have. Um, the people within the environment, just great people that, um, you know, give into everyone else and, and not really expecting anything in return. And um, I think one of the, like, one of the really cool thing, things that Fly has brought to the club is going back in time, learning about the history, learning about the players that came before us, the people that mm -hmm. paved the way for, to allow us to do what we do and what makes Collingwood so special. So um, every time we put on the black and white stripes, we know who we're representing, what it means, um, and then that's our why and we go out there and we give 100% effort every week mm. as you would have seen too Fly's just so humble like he's creating an environment where everyone's equal yeah. we all just want to win it's not about like we celebrate individuals but we're just such a team and I think it's um, really infectious to be around and I'm really lucky I work closely with Brendan Bolton as my Lions coach and then um I'm learning my midfield craft a little bit, so I'm working closely with Hayden Skitworth and Scott Selwood too have been great for me and always um, try and put me in positions to succeed out there as I do with everyone. So um, I think the environment we've created, which is a credit to Fly, is just so infectious. Like you walk into the club on a Monday and he always says, you won't know if we won or lost, we just get to work again and everyone's mm. smiling. And um, yeah, it's, I'm so grateful to walk into the club and my first two years have been in an environment like like we have so and even i'd add on to what nick said and i feel like game day and as you would know i'm not too sure um obviously you've had other coaches but just he's um his addresses to the team and how he creates it really light-hearted and you know we spend more time laughing in there than mm. serious and um you know there'll be different blokes that um 
yeah, like like seem to we have the joke about and, and different sort of um, gags, but it's just really light hard and everyone obviously goes in the game um, really excited, but obviously you have that pressure of to perform, to execute. So he does an amazing job of, um, yeah, allowing the boys to relax and, and knowing that we've done the work um, and now it's about enjoying it and executing. Do you think the environment that's been created it is also the reason why there's so many guys in on their off day because, yeah. you know, the AFL and the AFLPA encourage guys to get away, but it's not uncommon to see large groups of guys in there because everyone just loves being there. I think the location of where we are, we're in an amazing spot near the MCG. You know, we all walk over to games together. It's like a buzz, it's an atmosphere, but, you know, I haven't seen a group, you know, that puts this work in, you know, takes the responsibility as an individual. You know, been at some pretty good clubs in Sydney and Hawthorne, and I know it just seems as though that guys are just really driving their careers, which is good to see. Yeah, well, I think as you said, Fly is so good with that balance. Um, like if we've played a tough game, we've travelled. Sometimes he might give us an extra day off, so we all feel fresh and ready to come into the club. And as you said, we're all so self-driven and aware of the position we're in. We're really grateful to be in the position we're in and want to keep winning. So I think it's that um, that desire to keep getting better um, every single day and yeah, try and get the ultimate. So we're all invested in trying to get that one percent better individually, and hopefully that contributes to the team. Definitely. Yep. No, nah, still long way to go, and you got to stay humble and uh yeah it's just it's just really cool to be on this journey though you know um you know regardless of the wins and losses i think what we're doing right now is really special we're all very grateful for it um you touched on before as well the support network um and obviously your dad being a star of the collingwood footy club i was a father son as well um but what about what about that the expectations from your old man himself but also the expectation and pressure being a father-son for someone who was such an icon for the club. And I know your dad is great about it and doesn't push you guys, but do you feel it still? Of course. I think it's always going to be there regardless of how well you're going or what you've uh, achieved. I think, you know, we Nick and I, dad did such a good job of, he's very humble and, and probably liked to keep very private. So growing up, we, we didn't know. I remember I would go to the football not knowing who dad was. And I just think he's really popular. People coming up to him, you know, by the time we got, <laughs> by the time Nick and I and dad um, were watching the game, it was halfway through the first quarter just because the people asking dad for a photo and dad's so good like that. And I think I was different to Nick. I, I wasn't like an elite junior or like really dominant. So I didn't get... Um, like a lot of attention even though I was um, you know everything dad did oh, there was pressure um, but I really felt it once I got drafted I think that's when it really really started and um, you know it's something that I've always looked at um, like a yin and yang like there's goods and bad to both of it and um, I always just think about how lucky I am like everything dad's done the opportunities he's given Nick and I you know the 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 little um, almost how lucky we are to learn from him firsthand um, you know, and then once we got to the club, it was all just up to us to really make the most. Of it. We're really lucky to come to Collingwood, such a big club. So um, it's always going to be there. And obviously, Nick gets so much media attention, does an amazing job of, um, you know, having that support network, network and staying grounded. But um, there's definitely times where it's tough. Um, yeah. We spoke about this the other day. I think like Dad will be the first person Josh and I'll call after the game just to check in and see what he thought. And often. Luckily, after the, uh, this year, it's been after a win, so we're all really happy. But um, his opinion means the world to us, and he's always so positive, as Josh said, never puts pressure on us. So could not be more grateful for him. He, um, he's done everything for us, and we wouldn't be in the position without him. So mm. it's, yeah, huge honour. Have you seen some of the goals he's kicked? Because I reckon he would have... You've got one goal of the year, maybe a second. I reckon <laughs> he's probably got five of them. Yeah, he's had a couple. I, I know that one against West Coast, he kicked in the final, the dribble kick. But um, no, as I said, Dad's extremely humble. He'll never sort of bring anything out. So I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper. I might watch <laughs> yeah. some YouTube videos later. But I um, think when we were younger, he tried to get out the old VHS, started up. But Nick and I were too busy kicking a football <laughs> after off. about a minute or two. But Playing FIFA. You know, like yeah. <laughs> newspaper footage. I definitely have. Like, I go on YouTube and watch um, Dad's highlights. It's amazing to see like the way the game was played back then and some of the goals he kicked, whether it was taking a mark, you know, um, you know, getting his forward to lead up and he'll kick a torp over his head for a goal. Like, <laughs> it was just funny times. And, um, you know, it's so cool for dad when I watch him play and think about how, um, you know, he kind of helped invent the dribble kick. And I think about how amazing it is what he's been able to accomplish. And, 
you know, it's just an opportunity for Nick and I to, you know, hopefully continue his legacy. That is one thing he does put pressure on me to do is kick a torp. So really? maybe we've got to tick that off with fly first or bolts out of the back line maybe. But would it be from full back or would it be a shot on goal? I think it'd be a shot on goal. Definitely a shot on goal. Really? But it'd have to be siren carry. gone. Otherwise, I think checkers would lose it at me if yeah, I'm having a a certain situation with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you both watch a lot of footy and probably similar to me. I feel like the modern football these days is steered away from you know, watching a lot of footy and, you know, you know, taking the time off to freshen up. There's so many different approaches from individuals. And I think, you know, as you mentioned, Fly gives us time off and, you know, we're able to come in fresh. But I think you two are genuine footy heads still. <laughs> I think, you know, you know, we obviously watch a lot of footy, but I, I think it does help you because you know so much about your oppo, you know so much about your teammates. How many games a week do you watch or do you more, you know, you'll research a player and watch specific players because, it's almost that thing of you're always learning. It seems like you two love watching the footy and um, yeah, I think that's probably not as mainstream as what it once was. Yeah, no, 100%. It can be a bit of both. I think this year I probably haven't watched as much footy because we've been playing on Sundays and I don't really like watching the footy before we play for some reason. I'm more... Um, I'll more watch footy if we play on a Friday night and I'm a couch potato for the next two days and I'll sit there and watch it. But I've been watching a lot of um, Marcus Bontempelli this year. I love the way he plays and goes about it and obviously such a great leader for the Bulldogs. But I love that he can sort of have 15 to 20 touches. He doesn't have 15. He'll have 20, 25 and he'll just dominate a game. Like he doesn't need much of the ball and um, very unselfish and such a humble guy too. So I love watching him go about it. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to learn a bit of his stoppage craft too, which you've helped me out with a little bit too. And as I said... Hayden Skipworth and Scott Sale would have been unbelievable for me and they're so experienced as well, so I'm very fortunate. But, um, yeah, the Bont is one I watch, as everyone does. Yeah, it's pretty good. It, was, it is cool because growing up, like, and before I met you and then once I met you and knowing that we're very similar and how much we love watching football and, and players, like Nick and I would go to the football younger and Dad would take us just to watch certain players and their patterns and we've probably watched you a number of times and, like Nick said, other guns and... We would, yeah, not even worry about where the ball is. We'd see what they were doing off the ball and, the, you know, the angles and patterns they would run, the timing of it. So, yeah, it's always been something that um, we've, like, kind of focused on and, and watching and trying to take little parts from everyone's games. And still this day, like, Nick and I will have the sports card on our laptop and watch a lot of it at home if we want to watch, you know, if I want to watch another winger, mm -hmm. we'll see what they do. Or um, Nick wants to watch a half forward or, you know, maybe someone that's going to tag him and see what they've done in the past. So it's pretty cool. And I think, like you said, it does help a lot um, because subconsciously you're taking all that stuff. Um, and then when you go play, you don't want to be thinking too much. You want to be playing on instinct and play free. But because you've done all the work, it just happens naturally mm -hmm. and you've got it, yeah, stored away. Yeah, for sure. What about favourite players? You mentioned, mentioned Bontepelli. Who was your favourite growing up and who do you like watching in today's game? My favourite was always Andrew McLeod. I think Dad Dad was always my favourite, but apart from Dad, Andrew McLeod and just the way he played, just an entertainer, unbelievable champion player, big-time player. Um, and Nick and I were lucky enough to actually meet him before our Adelaide game last year. Hayden Skipworth organised it and it was awesome to see yeah, just some of the insights he had and what helped him and what made him tick. And obviously it rubbed off on Nick because he had the huge game over in Adelaide. Um, that 40 and three. That he day. had the big game. So <laughs> it was cool. Plays it was really cool to learn from him and some of the, the tips and, and the advice he gave us. So, um, yeah, he was an amazing player to watch. And like Nick said, I love watching, you know, Marcus Bontempelli. Jeremy Cameron's unbelievable just the way he moves for a full forward, like like just an amazing athlete. So it's pretty cool to watch um, players today that you still go, wow, like you just can appreciate what they do. What about you, ND? Pretty similar. As I said, the Bond, um, there's so many players that are flying at the moment. Zach Butters having an unbelievable year, um, so creative, and Christian Machaka so dominant. There's lots of players. You could probably pick five players from each team that you sit down and would love to watch. But... Um, yeah, the Bonts. Bont and Zach Butters are two players that I think are so damaging and good to watch. Yeah. What about the on-field attention? Um, because you've both experienced it. You know, you, you have players go to you, both of you, to try and nullify you. Um, how have you found that? Because I feel like it's probably gone to a new level this year. And obviously, you know, we, we, we do things to always help out our teammates. But in the end, it, it can be a challenge and it's something you have to deal with. How have you found the challenge of that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely still learning with it there's a lot of learnings i've taken this year but then a lot of learnings i think i've still got to go i think got to find different ways to get the ball and impact games so for what for me one way to impact the games more defensively now um fly actually grabbed me after an edit against sydney and 
I did a smother and then a, a spoil and he told me that's the sort of acts that win premierships um, and individual success will come and that really stood out to me and I think um, resonated with me and something that I want to invest in with the team. I think if I can't um, impact the game as much offensively, I think defensively is somewhere that I can impact and be an energy giver as Fly always talks about to others. So um, in a way, I think as you'd know by now, the team sort of loves it when I get tagged. We sort of feel like we can manipulate the opposition and they're sort of reactive to what we do. So um, lucky that I can go forward or play midfield, play a couple of positions to throw them out a little bit. But um, yeah, still so many learnings to go. And I think you've got a lot more experiences to share with me about how you used to deal with it. But um, yeah, I guess I just go to a lot of people that have been tagged heavily before and, and they give me a lot of insights, which I'm grateful for. It is funny when uh, we, were, we were chatting about the, the footy watching and, you know, when we do bounce ideas off each other and I know, like, how far advanced you two are because if I say, oh, have you thought about this or trying this? You're like, yeah, yeah, I've already done that. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, my, like, my ideas are all done. You're already taking them all. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. No, it is cool and it's like, I love it. Like, we do it with, you know, so many players and, like, you've got so many tips and tricks. Um, your craft's quite amazing and it is it is cool to just to collaborate like that and all talk about stuff like ways to get better ways to get in the game or so it's it's good yeah for sure what about who would you say because i'm new this year and you know you're still getting to know the different personalities you two are close but you're pretty infectious and close with everyone in the group like everyone loves being around you too who would you say is the we'll start with the funniest who's the funniest bloke on the list or who do you get the most laughs out of I think I think we'd all be pretty similar. Jordy the Goey, he's yeah. just um, yeah, yeah, the axe yeah. is unbelievable. He's, <laughs> We're missing him on this trip. That we, we need him. Yeah. I think um, yeah, I wish like people got to see that side to him more. Like just how caring he's got the biggest heart, so right. caring, um, just a great personality around the club, and he really does um, make everything lighthearted and not not as serious. So, like football clubs can be a lot of meetings um, and everything like that. So he he does a good job of breaking that up and. Um, yeah, he's just unbelievable, unbelievable footballer, but even better person. So yeah. his company is awesome. Yeah, he's one of our best mates, isn't he? I think, you know, people have completely the wrong idea about him. I think he keeps his circle very close and understandably so because he also gets a lot of attention. But if you're, I guess, in the inner circle and knowing well, you know, you know how much of a good person he is. But also the one thing I was surprised with that he puts a lot of work in too. Like mm. he, he, he's so fit this year with his running, but even... You know, every morning before our main sessions, like he's in the handball club out there. It's good to see him that. handballing a bit more too. Yeah. We did, we did <laughs> need that. He's, he's a big kicker. Yeah, but um, no, you did sum it up pretty well. I think Geordie's, um, yeah, he's a ripper. So caring, loving. I think another one like that, that I'd touch on that you sort of said they have the wrong interpretation of him too sometimes is Braden Maynard. I think he yeah. can be a bit of a hothead on field. Um, and can bump some blokes and, and rub people off the wrong way, but he's the most caring bloke you'll ever meet off field. And I think his competitiveness comes off his care too. Like he cares so much about us that if he sees one of us, um, the opposition getting stuck into one of us, he's straight over there in, in a heartbeat. So love playing with Bruzzy and he's also got a great sense of humor, which helps. Yeah, Bruz is hilarious. But, and also very, I agree with that, I would say. He's, he's almost like a, off field he's like a cuddly bear isn't he yeah. on field he's a beast and off field he's just sort of you know he's he's like a nurturing type of guy awesome he um it's good luck like, i think you can see the love he has for his teammates when he plays he's the first to stick up for someone or have someone's back so he um he's having another great year all australian last year he's having he's backed it up really well so it's awesome to see him yeah thriving and what about pendles because you know i've always idolized him and to have someone on our list he's almost like a father figure he's an extra coach he was obviously one of your favorite players growing up and you guys are going to have similar journeys in the way your footy career pans out how, how often do you leave on lean on scotty yeah i lean on him a lot um i'll always go to him during the week um dependent upon the opposition we're playing and sort of pick his brain he's obviously got so much experience and um he's just so humble like i think as you'd know now that's one of his best traits he's he'd never ask you to do something that he wouldn't do and he's very sacrificial with the way he plays too I think he could get the ball a lot more but he holds his shape for us and does so many things defensively that a lot of people wouldn't see and he doesn't get that recognition for such a superstar that he's been um 
he's so humble but um yeah little funny story i was actually playing flappy golf with my missus the night before the game and my game center What's flappy golf i've never heard of that it's a little game on like a game Boy. yeah Atari. it's a golf game no on your iphone just an oh, app iPhone, okay. and my game center when i was like eight years old was pendles hashtag 10 and i was on the <laughs> phone to her and i'm like yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying to join and then i joined her and it's come up pendles 10 and she got all scared she's like shit pendles is joined what do we do <laughs> i'm like no nah, nah, that's me it's still the same game center so i've idolized him for a long time and it's um, pretty surreal to play with him. I think night before the game, I was like, it did hit me a little bit again. I was like, wow, I'm playing with my like the person I idolise, sort of my hero um, tomorrow again. So every game with him is pretty special. It is. Um, it is cool with Pendles, and even like you'd know Tommy. Like when we get on the sprung floor, so our basketball court, um, when we start playing basketball, we play one v one. Just that's when you see him get a bit cheeky and the arrogance yeah, come out, and he'll give us buckets on swagger. buckets, and he'll just have a new bloke coming in. Yeah. And, um, you'll get on a hot streak of like 10 blokes in a row unbelievable oh hand in his face nothing yeah. you can yeah. do and you still hit it yeah. so um, yeah it's awesome and it's unbelievable the AG is to be doing what he's still doing he can go for where's the limit 450 games do you reckon oh, he could he could if he wanted to he's a freak I don't know love to how see him he to keeps backing it up but he, he keeps doing it I just had a memory that came back to me then similar to the Pendles 10 thing I had a I had a trip away so my idol was Gary Ablett Jr and I had a trip away to America one season for like a basketball trip and Gary was on the trip and there was an email chain. I'm not sure if you ever saw it, but my email account must've been from when I was young, but my icon photo was Gary. <laughs> and we're in a big email chain. I'm like, and he was replying. I'm like, Oh God, I hope he doesn't see this, this is embarrassing. That's but awesome. ended up going on the trip and he's one of the great blokes I've ever met. But, um, yeah, he's a ripper. Been. I actually, um, I got talking to him. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I got talking to him the other day before I played Carlton. Um, because I knew that Ed Kerner used to tag him a lot and I was aware that Ed was probably going to go to me. So he gave me a lot of tips and, um, yeah, he sort of, he, he said, call me before the game um, if you need anything or we'll grab a coffee when he's in Melbourne. So as you said, that's another person I've idolised over the years. So it's pretty cool to sort of be in touch with these people now mm. and um, pretty surreal, yeah. Well, Juddy was another one as well who's... Um, mm. Yeah, he didn't give me any tips on Ed though. He yeah. said uh, <laughs> Ed's one of his good friends, so he wouldn't help me out there. <laughs> oh, that's all right, um, boys. We better wrap it up. But thanks so much uh, for jumping on the pod, uh, the first ever pod with the Dacos boys. So uh, I'll probably owe you to a coffee or uh, maybe a few handball receives. Which I know you love <laughs> a couple that, handball so. receives will do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks again for jumping on the pod, and hope everyone enjoyed the listen. Pleasure, Tommy. Thanks for having us, Tommy.